Okay, so welcome everyone who's uh, joining us. Uh, we're going to go over a generic main tank build um, for this patch. It's going to include options for all classes because at the moment you can virtually play pretty much any class um, as a main tank. I'm playing a lot of Necro main tank this patch, some Warden main tank, obviously DK. So you've got options in terms of you can play pretty much whatever class you want. It really does just depend on your group and what you're comfortable with. There is no must-have, real must-have main tank uh, class. Sork tanks are being used. Everything's being used. The only ones that are probably not, Nightblade and Templar, are kind of not really being used too much. But you could. So, in terms of tank race, obviously I'm not going to go into too much detail. I've done a million videos on tank race, but generally... If you want to make your life easier for trial content, you are going to typically be blocking quite often as a main tank. So you want to focus on going for a resource-based uh, race. So in this case, Red Guard, Imperial, Argonian are going to be good options for a main tank. Nord is also going to be a good option because of the alt gain and the resistances can be kind of nice. They're not essential, however. With a Red Guard... Red Guard provides the best sustain uh, generally in the game because you can gain, uh, reduce the cost of weapon abilities. That's all weapon abilities um, by 8%. So your blockade, your taunt, your heroic slash, things like that. Increase your max stamina by 2k. Adrenaline rush. When you deal damage, you restore 1,005 stamina once every 5 seconds. So if you put blockade down, that's a magical cost in skill. And then you can get 1,005 stamina back. That's over 12k stamina a minute. Um... Argonian's obviously good as well because you drink a potion. You get your potion resources and additional resources from the potion passive. Um, Imperial's good because it reduces your skills by 6%. So those are good. You mainly want to go for a resource-based race, but you don't have to. I tank with a wood elf. Um, you can tank with anything. But if you want to make your life a bit easier, go with a resource-based uh, tank race. Yeah, for main tanking trials, really, uh, just Bewitch Sugar Skills is pretty good. You don't have to go with that, though. There are other options. You can go for, like, a food with a Magicka recovery on and then consolidate um, your champion points in different ways to get more resources back that way. Or use different traits of your jewellery to get different resources so you can focus on having a different food slightly. But it's really up to you. I just prefer to go with Bewitch Sugar Skills in most cases, but you can use other stuff if you want. And in terms of your potions, again... Typically, your most useful potion is your Tristat potion because it gives you all of your resources back and all of your recoveries. Uh, if you've obviously been collecting your daily rewards forever, you'll have plenty of crown tri restoration potions as well. When it comes to things like attributes, you just place your attributes wherever you want. Um, the best thing to do really is to like sort out your CP first, sort out your skills, and then put your gear on. And kind of see where your stats are at. And then you want to balance out everything so that you've got a good amount of health, magic, and stamina. Now, for a main tank, typically you do want to have a little bit more. You want to aim for 40k health in this situation. And then I've got 45k on my max health, 20k magicka, and 24.8k stamina. Now, I could bring my magicka up. I could reduce a bit of health out of this quite easily and take it down to 40k. Bring my magicka up to 22k. Bring my stamina up to 25, 26, 27k. It's up to you. You just balance it out whichever way you're most comfortable. But always try and aim for the minimum of 20k Magicka and then a minimum of around 25k Stamina. On your Munda Stone for main tanking, the Atronaut Munda Stone for Magicka Recovery because Magicka Recovery is the most useful thing that you're going to get from a Munda Stone generally. Other options would be potentially the Steed sometimes where that gives you health recovery and um, some extra speed. That can be kind of good very, very rarely, but sometimes. And... In really ridiculous fights where you're unable to use the Master Sword on board, you could use the Lady Munda Stone if you've got super low resistances. But again, resistances aren't that useful if you're blocking because you've got block mitigation. When you've got block mitigation, that reduces your damage. While blocking, most people in the main tank role have got over 80% block mitigation. Your resistances aren't super important. They do help, but they're not essential. Like as long as you've got over kind of 25k buffed resistances, you can pretty much do any trial. I don't even look at my resistances. I've done every trial and trifecta and all that kind of stuff, and it's never been really much of an issue in terms of the physical incoming damage. And then in situations where I've needed high resistances, I've been using the Master Sword and Board. So when you think of something like 
um, bar side hard mode, master sword and board was in there, I had my maxed out resistances. So, depending on the situation, you may need some, but typically it's not that vital. So for main tanking trials, this patch, the gear that you want to use is is pretty uh, pretty much going to be the same for most trial situations. So for me, I have got, uh, first of all, Yolnacrin. So I'm using the Yolnacrin gear set, of five piece, and I'm using that on the weapons and the jewelry. So I've got a one-hander, a shield, an ice staff, and then three pieces of jewelry. The reason why I like using Yolnacrin on the jewelry is because I've already farmed this from VSS. So now when I want to recraft it, it costs me 25 transmute crystals and it's already in gold quality. Now you've got a couple of options. Again, you can go with Infused or Triune typically is the main tank of the best two to go with. Obviously Triune is going to give you more max stats. Infused is going to give you more sustain. For me, I've got three Magicka Recovery. You could also go with some cost reduction. So having one cost reduction in there can be good. Cost reduction hits diminishing returns quite quickly. So you don't need to, I wouldn't go three cost reduction, but having one, maybe two cost reduction can be useful. I prefer Magicka Recovery. Magicka Recovery ticks every two seconds. The only time using cost reduction is better is if you physically cast a skill every second. So if you have Magicka Cost Reduction Glyphs, then you need to be casting something every second to be fully benefiting from that. Otherwise you'd be better off using Magicka Recovery. You could also use some stamina cost reduction if you're using a lot of stamina cost skills. So on a Dragon Knight, if you're using the stagger skill, um, the Stone Giant skill for stagger, then using a stamina cost reduction infused is actually really useful as well because it's going to bring that cost down a little bit. Um, so those are your two options. On the one-hander, as a Dragon Knight, you use Charged Poison. That procs your Combustion Passive. It gives you stamina back. For every other class, you go infused with absorbed stamina because there isn't really anything that's essential to use on your one-handed weapon. Um, you could use decisive as well for a little bit more ultimate, but it really depends how good you are at gaining your ultimate back. If you're running gear sets that obviously generate ultimate, then it's going to be good. If you're using, um, if you've got major and minor heroism and you've got decisive, you're going to get more ultimate. But decisive only will give back ultimate when you gain ultimate. So. It's up to you. But yeah, those are your three options on your weapon um, your weapon trait. Um, for trials, realistically, you want to go full sturdy because you are going to be blocking quite frequently. So sturdy is going to provide the most benefit. Now, let's say you only block 50% of the time, then a different trait might be useful. But at the same time, if you've got a high block cost, uh, if you've got high block cost, you're going to drain your stamina too fast. The only time it's not worth using sturdy is when you don't physically have to block. So in trials like Asylum Sanctorium as the main tank, you're only blocking once every five seconds. So that's not very often. You can go long periods of time without needing to block when the boss is doing the spit and the heavens, and then it's doing um, the cone. Like you can go 20, 30 seconds without needing to physically block, which means it's a waste having sturdy. But in every other trial, so virtually Cloudrest and Asylum Sanctorium are the only two as the main tank where you don't really need to block and other traits might be better. On the Ice Staff, you want to just go Infuse Crusher because that is a debuff that you're expected to maintain as a main tank. You're expected to keep an Infuse Crusher on the main boss pretty much 100% where possible. Um, so that is what you go with. For the monster set, there's only really two options for trial tanking for main tanks as a monster set. Your first one is Nazare. This is very, very good. So you get max health and then you get... Uh, when you use an ultimate ability, the closest six enemies within 12 meters have all major debuffs and minor debuffs applied to them, extended by one second per 20 ultimate spent. This effect can occur once every 30 seconds per target. So you only want to use your ultimate once every 30 seconds as a maximum. When you use your ultimate, so you're going to use an aggressive horn, it doesn't matter what class you're on, uh, you'll use aggressive horn and that's going to extend your major debuffs. You want to try and time it with major vulnerability with things like Brittle. So you want to make sure someone's got minor Brittle applied, someone's got um, the major vulnerability applied, all of the things applied that you can. Then you cast your ultimate when you've got 500 ultimate if you can. And you give a huge, huge benefit because those buffs, uh, those debuffs are extended for a long period of time. And now, it's, again, it's a thing where it's up to you. Um, you could use a heavy helmet. You could use a heavy shoulder. You can use a light shoulder and a heavy or medium, you can use 5-1-1, you can use 6-1, you could use 5 heavy and 2 medium or 2 light, it's really up to you. 
The difference is going 7 heavy is more defensive. Going 5 1 1 is better for resources. Going 5 2 again is better for a certain resource. So if you go 5 heavy and 2 light, that's better for your magic recovery and things like that. If you go 5 heavy and 2 medium, that's better for reducing your dodge roll cost and things like that. So there are different benefits to doing different setups. It's up to you to choose one which works best for you. If you want to be strong and more defensive though, then 7 heavy is the one. I've gone for 5 on 1 generally, but I will chop and change it depending on what I'm doing to try and benefit more from different resource pools. Um, on the main body set, I'm using the Turning Tide set. So for trials now, this is pretty essential for most things now because what it means is by using Turning Tide, your Necro damage dealers don't need to use a Colossus ultimate anymore. They can use a different ultimate and still benefit from the minor vulnerability, uh, the major vulnerability. Now, when you look at this gear set, it gives max health, it gives max stamina, it gives max health. When you block, you gain flowing water for 10 seconds, causing your next bash attack to deal magic damage to up to six enemies in a five by 10 meter line. So five width and, uh, and, and 10 meters away from you. And it applies major vulnerability for 10 seconds that increases the damage taken by 10%. And this can occur once every 15 seconds. So the reason why this is so strong is because it doesn't you don't have to physically use an ultimate and you're able to gain major vulnerability. The only other way to gain major vulnerability really is by using the Colossus ultimate on a Necromancer. By combining Turning Tide with Nazare, you can get virtually 100% uptime of major vulnerability if you time it right. So that means you, you've got a uh, block, you've got a bash, you've got a proc it. You, when it comes around again, do the same again, but then cast your ultimate with 500 ultimate, cast your Warhorn, and with Nazareon. And then when it's about to run out, wait till the last second, bash, and then you should be able to bash again to proc it again. So you can virtually get a huge uptime. And this works better in some situations more than others. So in VSS, it works fantastic. When the dragon lands, you stand, you block an attack, you bash, your horn. You get uh, major vulnerability the entire time the dragon's on the ground, the dragon flies off. You can bash on the adds to give them the major vulnerability as well. You save your ultimate as soon as the dragon lands. Rinse and repeat. So there's certain situations where this is really, really good. Um, in some situations, it's not so good. So it can be difficult. So for example, in Asylum Sanctorum, it can be tricky to proc it because the boss takes so long until it hits you, it can be a problem. But you can kind of try and time it and dodge roll hits and then take hits on purpose intentionally. So you just have to look at how fast does the boss hit? Is it going to be reliably... Um, giving you the flowing water buff that you can activate it. But it is super strong. It's a super, super strong set. Um, the reason why I run this on the body, so I run it on the chest, the waist, the hands, the legs, the feet. The reason why is because jewelry materials are very expensive and you can get Yonaker and gold jewelry with no cost other than 25 transmute crystals. The other reason is because if you back bar this set and just run it on one bar, the micromanagement is quite difficult because you need to block, you need to be hit while blocking, you then have to bash, and that's how you proc the gear set. So if you were not doing that, if you only got it active on one bar, you've got to physically, you might have to switch to your back bar, wait a second, block, bash. It, it's too many things. You've got to block and get hit and bash. It's too many things to micromanage onto one bar. If you can just deal with it on either bar, it doesn't matter which bar you're on, but you're blocking quite often as a main tank anyway, so you're going to be activating this set much more easier. Now this set has a base uptime of 66.66%. That is the base uptime with no other things involved. When you include the Nazare monster set, it's easy to maintain over 90% without much effort. You just have to time your procs, you have to make sure you're procking it. You have to wait till the last second to activate it sometimes when it's when you're overlapping and different things. You do have to spend a bit of time looking at it and, and functioning and making sure you proc it at the right time. You don't want to just proc it at random times. You need to try and time it to activate it at the right time when the timer's is running down and it's going to be off cooldown again before it's active again. So you've got to really think about it. Um, typically, with using Nazare, you wouldn't want to use your ultimate during ad pulls if you're not going to get your ultimate back for boss fights. So, yeah, maybe use your ultimate and, like, let's say you're doing a trial. You'll use your ultimate on the first ad pull if you can. Um, maybe you've got, like, a second batch of ads. You might use it then if you can. And you'll try and save it. You'll try and get through one ad pull without using it so you can get 500 ult. So you can use it when you get to the boss to get that huge, huge boost. 
On the gear, um, I've got full sturdy. If you wanted a bit more resistance, as you could put a reinforced chest. Generally, sturdy is the most valuable to use for trials generically because you are blocking more than 50% of the time. You're blocking more than 70% of the time. So you are taking a lot of um, hits, which mean you, your stamina is being depleted. Because your stamina is being depleted, you want, to hit, you want it to deplete as slow as possible, so you use Sturdy. Every other trait is not going to give you the same uh, sustained benefit as Sturdy is, um, no matter what. So, if you use something like Well Fitted, that's going to give you no benefit unless you permanently dodge roll in and sprint in and things like that. Like, you've got to really look at the benefit and the impact of different things. If you use Divine's Gear, for example, you're not going to get a huge amount of recovery that's going to be better than the amount of stamina you're losing by running... Divines versus Sturdy. So you've got to think about a lot of these different things. Sturdy can't be beaten. There's nothing you can do to beat Sturdy Gear for trial content as a main tank. I've run the tests, we've done the calculations, and Sturdy outperforms everything by quite a long way. Um, in terms of the enchants, as you can see on mine, a tri stat, you don't have to go tri stat. You can balance this out. So if you've got loads of health like I have, you could just go. Stamina on the big pieces, magic on the small pieces, or vice versa. You could go all stamina. You could do whatever you want. Um, it depends on your race as well. So if you were a Breton, you'd need to make sure you didn't have any magic. You'd probably need to use health and stamina. So it really depends what race you are. Try and just get to those benchmark numbers. Try and get to that uh, 40k health, that 25k stamina, that 20k magicka. And just balance things out the best you can. I like to use Tristat because they give just a spread of resources... It's, a, it's also good if you use Triune Jewelry and you've got Tristat Enchants. Like you've got a nice amount of everything. And everything is really high. And having more stats is just useful for getting through content. It's good that you can block for longer periods of time. You've got more Magicka to use for your skills. You've got more health to deal bigger hits. Um, so generally, it's pretty good. So that is the gear for the main tank roll. In terms of like general champion points for main tanking, the only ones that are really useful, Rashina... Liquid Efficiency, Steed's Blessing on the green. On the blue CP, you have got a few options again. You've got to think about the fights that you're in. So you definitely want to have, have all of the damage mitigation ones here. Uh, Ironclad's always pretty good. Duelist Rebuff is always pretty good. But then you have to really look at it. Enduring Resolve, reduce your damage taken by damage over time. Only use this if you're going to take dot attacks. If you're not going to take any dot damage, then use Bulwark instead. Unassailable, reduce your damage taken by area of effect attacks. Only use this if you're in a trial with big AoE attacks. If there is none, use Bulwark instead. On a Dragon Knight or, well, on any class, Cutting Defense is another good option because it will proc your weapon enchants. So that can be really useful when you're holding block and you're on your front bar. You're going to get resources back because it's going to proc your enchants. And as we said before, you're going to use Charge Poison or you're going to use Absorb Stamina Infused. Either one is going to proc by using Cutting Defense and it means you're going to get it procs on cooldown, you're going to get resources back. So that can be really nice. Another option is obviously Last Stand. If you know you're going to go low in health, you could use Last Stand to get some major heroism. So in Cloud Rest, Execute Phase, if you're the main tank, this is really good because you're going to drop low in health. It's going to proc major heroism. You're going to get loads of ultimate back. That's really nice. On the red CP, this is completely up to you. If you've got loads of health, then obviously you don't need to run Boundless Vitality. You can run something else. Generally... You can take Fortified, you can take Rejuvenation, you've got Slippery, Expert Evasion, um, Sustained by Suffering, another good one. Um, what else have we got? Celerity, another good one for movement speed. For Dragon Knights and Templars, Shield Master can be useful for reducing the cost of your shield, so your Igneous Shield. Um, and then over here we've got the good ones. So as a main tank, Bracing Anchor can be very, very useful. It can mean the difference between... An attack that you might need to dodge roll, an attack that you can stand there and block. It means you can take a lot more damage than you could before. So Bracing Anchor is really strong for fights with very little movability. That's not good in Cloud Rest when you've got to sprint across a room. But in a trial like Vast where you just stood still, it can be quite useful. Another option again for things like Dragon Knights and Templars. Wardmaster. It's just a straight up 10% damage reduction which is super strong. Uh, so when you cast Igneous Shield, Dragon Knights typically cast a lot of Igneous Shields. Wardmaster is so strong for a Dragon Knight tank who can just spam Igneous Shield. Um, so high damage fights where you can afford to spam Igneous Shield, Wardmaster is vital. For your skills, there's options for all classes. So the way that you've got to look at it is 
for me, you've got to have your taunt. So you've got Pierce Armor on every build. Um, and it's always on the same button on both bars. So like you've got on your front bar, you'll have your Pierce Armor. On your back bar, you'll have your Inner Rage. The reason you keep it on the same bar, so it doesn't matter which bar you're on, it's always like just the same movement. It's, it's reactionary to cast your taunt no matter which one it's on. Um, your next skill slot would be Heroic Slash, but this is a flex slot. So anytime you need a certain skill, this is to be dropped. But as a tank, you want to try and get your ultimate back fast. You do that by blocking attacks, roll dodging, uh, light attacking, Heroic Slash. Provides minor heroism. So it's a good skill to have. It also reduces the enemy's damage by 5%. But it is a flex slot. You can remove this for something else um, that's going to provide more benefit. So let's say, for example, you're going into a really high damage situation. You could use the support skill revealing flare, which would give you uh, major protection instead. That would be really useful in that situation. The next skill for me, obviously, we've got Igneous Shield. We've got things like Boneyard. These are kind of like group buff skills that I like to use. So these are like shield skills or group buffs or sustain buffs. On my middle button, I like to go with some kind of shield sustain kind of thing going on there. Um... On the next skill, we've always got a heal. So whichever whichever your tank heal is, so your Green Dragon Blood, Scythe, Dark Cloak, um, Clan Fear, whatever it is, your heal would go kind of on the next bar. And then for me, the last one is always like your group buff. So Stone Giant, things like that. For the Necro, obviously I've got uh, Grasp in there, but quite often Grasp won't be very good for the main tank. So obviously you'd slot something different. That's a kind of a flex slot if you're in that situation where it's not possible to use that. So you've got Grasp for the Necro, but it's not always essential, it's not always useful. Um, ultimate on the front bar, I like to go with Replenishing Barrier. It's like an emergency button if it's absolutely needed, but generally it's just for the Magicka Recovery. So you've got the Magicka Raid passive in your support skill line, which is going to give you 10% Magicka Recovery for each support ability slotted. So if you had Revealing Flare and Replenishing barrier slotted on your front bar. That's 20% more magicka recovery. Lovely stuff. On your back bar, like I said before, you always want to go with your range taunt on the same button, but on the other bar as your pierce armor. So in a rage in this case. The next skill I've got, engulf in flames or a fire skill. Now this is for Incratis because one of the other monster sets you could use was Incratis because as a main tank, often you'll be stacked on the boss. Sometimes the off tank is out of the group. In those kind of situations, the off-tank would use the Nazare set, and you would use Incratis. So I've got a flame skill there, and that, again, is a flex slot. If you are not using Incratis, then you don't need to use a fire skill. You could use a heal over time skill here, which would be really good, or you could use some other utility, maybe things like Blood Altar or Purge, if they're needed. Um, you could have things slotted like Caltrops for an AoE Major Breach, um, which whatever is really needed is what goes here. But in this case, we've got this because it need, it's needed for um, proccing and Kratis when we use that. Other skills you could use include Race Against Time. Things like Immovable in high damage fights. Skills like Pulsar, Crushing Shock, Ellie Drain, Cinder Storm, obviously for your DK. Igneous Weapons maybe for another group buff. Um, protective Plate if you're on a Dragon Knight like for reducing damage and, and things like that. Uh, Burning Embers maybe. You've got many, many options of skills that you could slot there. Um, in terms of Inner Fire, now Inner Fire is good, but you could also slot Frost Clench. Frost Clench is another option to use instead of Inner Fire, but it depends if you've got enough range. Like, if you need to taunt adds that are going to be really far away, then obviously use Inner Fire. If the boss is too far away, so Locust Thieves main tank when you're range tanking, um, you need Inner Fire because, like, Frost Clench is going to be a little bit too far. So you can use Frost Clench, and Frost Clench is really good because it's guaranteed brittle, it's um, guaranteed major maim on the enemy, reducing their damage by 10%. So it's a really nice skill to use, but it's only good when the boss is like really close to you. So that is that is another good alternative. On the next skill, you've got element of blockade. I like to use that on the middle button, the same as igneous uh, igneous shield, because it's this kind of the similar animation. So it, it like it's just going off that kind of memory. Uh, but blockade is essential for maintaining your infused crusher. And if obviously you're using something like a red guard, it's going to keep proccing that passive as well. That's going to give you the stamina back by having that down consistently on the ground. So I like to use that. Um, it's also going to give you a, a damage shield. So there's certain trials like in Hellra, when the main boss is doing uh, its execute mechanic, the Starfall, you can spam blockade with an ice staff 
and it's going to give a damage shield that pr protects your group. In VHOF, last boss in Execute, same thing. When the fire is dropping down your group, you can spam block A, protect your group. So it's really, really good utility. Um, next, we've got Balance. Now here you would just slot an armor skill or balance. You don't 100% need to use an armor skill because if you've got a wardening group, they're going to provide you with it. But it's nice to have for the Magicka sustain. So you can just cast balance. It'll cost health. It'll give you Magicka back. The side benefit of that is it gives you major resolve as well. On other classes, you might not need to use that. So the Templar, for example, would use rune for the sustain and the other benefits. If you were a warden, you'd obviously use expansive frost cloak so you can give your group the armor buff if you're the only warden. So there are other things that you have to consider there. And then finally, I like to have a chain skill. Obviously, most trials do have chainable adds and chainable things. If there is no chain chainable adds in the trial that you're doing, then obviously you replace this with another skill that's going to be more useful, some of the flex skills that we mentioned before. And then finally, you've got the aggressive horn skill, which buffs your group. This is the only ultimate you should be using really for group content. And you want to be using this when you're at 500 ult and using Nazare so that you can give your group aggressive horn. You can give them 30 seconds of uh, major... Sorry, max stats, max stamina, max magicka. And you also give them 35 seconds of major vulnerability from your turning tide and your Nazarite and your horn proc. So that is the skills for every class just there. So that, guys, is everything for Trials main tanking for this patch. That's the changes with the gear. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching.